Hello everyone. So let us discuss lymphatics of the lower limb today. The lymphatics of the lower limb are divided into a superficial group and a deep group. The superficial lymphatics run along with the superficial venous system. So the great saphenous vein which starts to the foot descends along the leg the thigh to finally terminate into the femoral vein and the femoral vein then extends as the external iliac vein. Now the superficial group of lymphatics run along these veins and the nodes are placed around the termination of the great saphenous vein as the vertical group of the superficial lymph nodes. Another group that is the horizontal group is placed along the tributaries of the great saphenous vein that is along the ex superficial external iliac and the superficial external pudendal veins. So these are the horizontal group. So these two together form a T-shaped orientation of these nodes. Now the vertical group of lymph nodes receive the lymphatics from the medial side of the foot the leg, also the thigh and drain into the vertical group. From the vertical group, the lymphatics now drain into the external iliac vein nodes. This might be a direct route and some may actually drain into deeper sets of the inguinal nodes before draining into the external iliac nodes. Thus. The vertical group receives the lymphatics from the medial aspect of foot, leg, the thigh. Now the horizontal group receives lymphatics from the gluteal region, the anterior abdominal wall that is nearby and along the pudendal vessels from the external genitalia. Hence, the horizontal group receives the lymphatics from the gluteal region, the anterior abdominal wall and the prepuce of the penis, vagina below the hymen, anal canal below the pectinate line and also some parts of the uterus, fallopian tube and the ovary may drain into the superficial nodes via the round ligament. Now, finally, both the sets, the vertical and the horizontal group of the superficial lymph nodes will terminate into the external iliac nodes. The vertical group may pass through the deep nodes before entering the external iliac, but majority directly enters the external iliac, that is bypassing the femoral canal. The advantage is that in cases of femoral hernia, the lymphatics of the lower limb are not obstructed. Hence, the femoral hernia will not be associated with lower limb edema. That is the importance that of the vertical limb bypassing the deep nodes and directly draining most of its lymphatics into the external iliac nodes. Now coming to the deep sets of nodes, they are two in number. One is the popliteal nodes the other is the deep inguinal nodes. The lymphatics in case of deep uh, system are running along with the deep veins of the lower limb. That is along the venae committants of the anterior tibial vein, along the venae committants of the posterior tibial vein, finally along with the popliteal vein and then in the anterior compartment of thigh along with the femoral vein. This femoral vein will then continue as the external iliac. So the lymphatics now ascend along these veins. Two sets of nodes, the popliteal nodes are located in the popliteal fossa and the deep nodes are present medial to the femoral vein in the femoral canal. Usually three nodes are known to be present. Two of them are within the femoral canal and the third one is usually seen below the saphenofemoral junction. The one within the femoral canal is also called 
the lymph node of cloquet. Now let us see the drainage. The lateral part of the foot and the leg drain into the popliteal nodes. From here, the efferents are sent to the deep inguinal nodes. These deep inguinal nodes will now drain into the external iliac nodes. So, the popliteal nodes, the area of drainage is the lateral foot and leg. The deep inguinal nodes receive the efferents from the popliteal nodes. The deeper compartments of the leg and thigh. One point to be noted here is that the lymphatics of the deep gluteal region pass along the superior and inferior gluteal vessels which are a branch of the internal iliac artery or the veins of the internal or tributaries draining to the internal iliac veins. Hence the gluteal deep lymphatics drain into the internal iliac nodes whereas the superficial and deep lymph nodes of the lower limb mainly drain into the external iliac nodes. Any inflammation of the lymphatics will produce a condition called lymph angitis. Lymph node enlargement is called lymph adenitis. Angio standing for vessels that is why lymph vessel inflammation. Adeno standing for gland that is why lymph node inflammation meaning lymph adenitis. An important thing to note here is that the inguinal group of lymph nodes may be enlarged in infection, cellulitis or any tumor melanoma arising from the lower limb but these may also be enlarged in cases of any tumor or infection of these perineal structures or these pelvic structures which is the prepuce, the vagina, uh, the anal canal and the uterus. One thing to note here is that testis does not drain into the inguinal nodes. Rather, by a testicular vein, it drains into parioptic group of nodes. That's all for today's class. Thank you.